Hey everyone, Lance here. With the launch of the 5000 series Ryzen processors, I thought it was finally about time I updated my CPU. As any of my followers will know that I got the RTX 3080, which I have over here. I got that right on launch. So I thought it was about time to upgrade my CPU from a 4th gen Intel to something newer and what better processor to go to than the newest Ryzen processors. Now I did order this at launch. I'm in New Zealand and things are usually a bit slow to get here anyway, but I've been told the 16th of November is when I'll get my CPU. So I don't have it yet. This is just part one of my build. As you can see, there's plenty more parts here for me to show off in this video. But I should get it in the first shipment of CPUs to the country, or so I've been told at least. So they're going to be paired with, obviously you can see the big box here, the Lian Li 011 Dynamic, which I have behind me here in white. I have already got my old hardware in there, my old CPU and the 3080, which you can also see in a vertical GPU mount which is also from Lian Li. This was my existing power supply and that's currently in the machine as well. The EVGA Supernova 1000 Watt G3, which is a gold rated power supply. To go along with all of that, obviously you can see there's a white theme going on here. Two 16 gigabyte kits of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB. These are 3600 megahertz kits. So a total of four DIMMs adding up to 32 gigabytes of memory. So that will fill up all four DIMM slots. Mainly for aesthetic purposes, I don't know if I'll be needing that much memory, but the heat sinks on these are white as well. And to go with that, obviously the Gigabyte B550 Vision D. So this, it's an empty box, it's fine. This is a gorgeous motherboard. The reason I actually went with AMD and Ryzen processors, other than the performance they're getting, which is just destroying the 10900K from what I've seen people, uh, people's reviews of them show, um, was that I want PCIe Gen 4. So this is a beautiful black and white motherboard heaps of expansion to it. This is not going to be a full in-depth review of any of these parts if that's what you're looking for, but more my build blog, my experience with everything, and this gives me what I want. I know there's not a lot of white on here, but for what I'm going for, it will be perfect. There'll be a lot more white parts to the build. So that's that. I do need to wait for the CPU to arrive, as I said. But other than those parts, I also have some more components in regards to this build. This is the Thermaltake Pacific PR22D5+. Plus. This was already in my system before and I loved it. So that will also be going in again. I've got some uh, Fantex Neon lights. So these are actually diffused LEDs. So they're not going to give that sort of blinding bright light. You can actually have these visible and they're like old school neon signs, I guess, which is where they got the name neon from. But they're nicely diffused and look very clean. And I've also got some white Corsair hardline fittings, 12 millimeter fittings as 12 millimeter tube is what I'm familiar with. And I'm going to stick with that. And I've also got a butt ton of radiators that I already had, a couple more, one more. Uh, so they'll be going in the system and if you want to see something gross, here is all of the dust from the front of this radiator. Well, this the next lot of parts are here, so I now have everything I need for this build apart from my CPU water block. but. Showing off some of these parts, I have the EK Quantum Vector RTX 3080. 
complex C GPU water block. So obviously that is going to be keeping my RTX 3080 nice and cool. This will obviously fit the reference card, which is what my pallet GPU has in there. And to go with that, I have the EK Quantum Vector backplate. This being nickel rather than the black that I've had with previous cards. I went with nickel to tie in more with the lighter colors of this build. And even though the GPU is going to be in a vertical mount and you're probably not going to see this, I thought it would be a nice touch just if you look from the glass panel on the front, you would see this just being nice and reflective. For fans, I got the Corsair Lightloop 120. These are going to go onto the radiator that sits on the back of the case facing forward. So for that reason, I decided I'm not going to paint my radiators as there is still some black in the case and on the motherboard. So I think the white of the fans will offset some of the black from the radiator nicely. So I didn't see any reason potentially creating more problems by painting them. So they're going to stay. I did want to get the Lian Li Uni fans, but in New Zealand they were near impossible for me to track down. Nothing wrong with Corsair fans. I've used the older fans in the past. I've never used these, but they have great things to be said about them online. And of course, I am just going to be setting them to white, and that will tie in more so with the white of the build. Coming back to water cooling, I also got five one meter tubes of Bits Power PETG tubing. I'm going with the 12 millimeter outer diameter tubing and if I can't do all of my runs with this much tubing, then maybe it's time to go back to soft tubing, but we'll get it done, shouldn't be too hard. And this I'm pretty excited for. This is going to be very interesting, I think. So this is an Aorus, so Gigabyte Aorus PCIe Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD. This is one terabyte and I'm hoping I'll get away with just the one drive. I'll see how that goes as I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Cold War. I mean, those two together are probably gonna take up half of this one terabyte drive, but we'll see. The thing I'm finding interesting is that the theoretical read speed of this is 5,000 megabytes per second. So that's gonna be super cool to have. And lastly, obviously the part you are all here for, the 5000 series Ryzen 9 12 core 24 thread CPU. So if you can't guess by those specs, it's the 5900X, and this is obviously the centerpiece of this build. I mean, unless you count the RTX 3080, but since these came out, those are old news. And I am so excited to finally get a CPU upgrade after almost seven years, I would say at this point. 4790 I got quite a while ago, 2014 maybe. Anyway, I am hyped to get this. I think I'll be able to stream, game, do whatever I like once that's in there. Oh my goodness. So right now I'm in Call of Duty Cold War. Oh, this is on here. Um, and I'm getting, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got Fraps running up there. Not Fraps, uh, Reva Tuna statistics. There's no overclocks on the GPU, by the way. It's just um, XMP on the memory, on the CPU. Um, and every setting is maxed out. So this is Call of Duty uh, Black Ops Cold War, the new one. Um, and everything's maxed out just with film grain and motion blur off. And we're running anywhere between low 60s to low 70s in this particular mission. This mission is called, uh, I think, a brick in the wall. So, uh, I mean, depending on the area, we're getting between low 60s. Wow, he died. To, I mean, we're in the 87, 96, 97. 
So once again, we're in Modern Warfare, playing Warzone in every setting's max with motion blur and any kind of film grain effects turned off. We're also at 100% resolution scale, and I'm hoping you can see the FPS, but I'm getting in the sort of mid to high 80s. This is obviously just warm up. Um, and I am going doing all of these tests in the native resolution of this monitor, which is 3440 by 1440. I mean, that's what I play at. And more and more people are playing at this kind of resolution now. So I thought I would show sort of what I've been getting. I've been playing a lot of Warzone lately, so I was considering streaming it, but I think now it's going to be a lot easier with the 12 core Ryzen in the system. So let's see once we drop how it's looking. I'm just going to jump right away. I'm not going to worry too much about being super competitive. But like right now we're getting 95, 91, 104. So we're getting pretty high FPS. Something interesting about this game is the 4790 always sits around 99 degrees. Um, but the GPU is is never fully utilized. Like for, for example, now we're at 73% utilization and 88 or mid to low 80 FPS now mid 90s and it just feels super smooth to play I mean I never really have much problems just want, to, just want a little bit of action Everyone's scared to come near me, I think. This window's broken. I mean, as you can see, I hope you can see the FPS counter. But as you can see, get pretty decent frame rate. Someone shot at me from here. shot me easy for me right now I'm in Watch Dogs Legion and this game is a very new title and it just looks amazing all the settings are max except for DLSS which I've turned off as it just in my opinion looks garbage it adds a grain over the entire image and I just really don't like the look that it gives but when you're driving, I'm getting sort of low 30 FPS mark. I'm seeing some t high 20s. I mean, it doesn't look as bad as it sounds. I mean, it still feels okay. Um, and when you're walking, I mean, you get mid to high 30s. With DLSS on, I get about 10 FPS more than that. But when it's off, it just looks a lot nicer and I guess that's the point of that setting so now we're in Red Dead Redemption 2 everything's maxed the resolution scale is set to normal so 100% or whatever it's called in this and motion blur is off and the game looks amazing the, this game actually does max out the GPU on the Vulcan engine uh, and the CPU has actually got very low utilization well mainly in this area of course um, with 27% utilization but previously I did have a few settings bumped down and I was getting around 60 to 70 FPS um, so if I'm on the horse I'll get up a bit of speed where the textures will be moving through a bit quicker and I mean FPS still sits at around the same around the 30 FPS mark but the CPU utilization goes up so this title actually does in fact make use of all of the horsepower from this GPU. No pun intended, little friend.
bit of a progress update here. I've started getting everything in the case and in the back I have a 360 millimeter radiator. It is quite thin, only I'm gonna say 20 millimeters thick. And then I've got this 240 EK radiator in the top which is about 40 millimeters thick. No fans on that yet as I really fell in love with the Corsair Light Loop fans after I opened them and got hands on with them. So I've ordered some more to go in the top up here to match the rest of the case and just keep it all consistent. This is the Thermaltake PR22D5 Plus pump res combo and I've decided to mount it to the bottom of the case just so there's no brackets cluttering things up around the fans. Obviously we have the vertical mount for the GPU and you can see some of the cables in the back there. So my next step will be to pull the cooler off my, almost lost it, my gorgeous pallet RTX 3080 Gaming Pro and put the EK vector block on there. I also got this EK Quantum Velocity AM4 CPU block so we can see the motherboard with that just looks absolutely stunning. I think it looks gorgeous and it's exactly what I wanted. I just love how this looks. So I'm going to chuck this in, put the GPU block on, put the GPU in and then it's basically just a matter of planning the runs for the loop which really it is the hardest part, the most daunting at least. So let's get in and I'll show you guys some of that. The block is on the GPU and it looks so sick. Ho oh, ho, shiny boy. And this is just going to look amazing. Sitting right there. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy with how this is going so far. I spent literally hours trying to figure out how to get this bend to look tidy. I tried to have it run behind the radiator and out. I um, went through many, many pieces of tubing. Just old um, cutoffs and things that I already had. So I haven't cut into the new tubing I've bought just yet. I've also done this return run here. So there'll be three more runs to do. The one coming from the pump into the GPU, that's a simple 90. Then one from the GPU to the CPU, I'm not sure what I want to do for that. And then from the CPU into the top radiator which will just be a 90 and then a 90. So what I've been using for bending is these Bisky, uh, basically bending guides I guess, so they have a groove in there. You can sort of mount them to a board if you liked. I did have a board of wood that I was going to do that with and then I just decided not to. So obviously we have 180, 90 and a 45. I've only used the, the 90 so far. Um, and other than that, I might try and get the bends done tonight. I mean, it's 2 a.m. but why stop now? Um, so I've got my heat gun and maybe I'll show you guys some bending. Well here we have it. I've got all the bends, all the runs done exactly how I like them. I love how this comes along, round and then back around. I don't love that these have different fittings on them, but I only had eight of the white Corsair fittings, which I actually really like using um, just because the collars are so thin and small compared to the EK fittings. But that is hidden at the back, so I'll see how much it bothers me over time before I decide if I want to change it or not. 
Um, this is the first triple bend I've ever done and it honestly came out better than I expected. It's not perfect if you look very carefully but does the job, looks the part, almost not noticeable that it's not 100% perfect. And then just this morning my uh, next lot of Corsair Light Loop fans arrived so they're on. I did actually have to remove the radiator to get those fitted up so I'm glad I didn't fill it before I put them on. As you can see there's a very small amount of clearance there but the build fills the case nicely. I mean if the case was any smaller it wouldn't have all fit in there so I do like that it looks full but not cluttered. So now I've got a funnel and a fill tube and a jug and obviously some distilled water to do the first fill on this. All I have connected is my 24 pin jumper down here and the Molex connector for the pump which is there almost off camera. So let me get my fill loop connected and we'll get that filled. Here it is, time for the absolute first boot and all going according to plan. I can then get windows installed, get all the utilities and things I need. I'm doing a fresh install, so moment of truth. We have, we have lights, we have something on the screen, oh, okay. Okay, it's up and running. We've got all the fans are going except for this top one, which I'll figure out later, but the RGB lighting is going on the fans and the memory, so I'm happy with that. Um, and here we have it, guys. Look how good that came out. I'm just, I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm just so proud of myself. It's one of the best builds, if not the best PC build I have ever done. So we've got the 190 into there. This is the first ever triple bend piece of tubing or tubing run I've done. So we go 90, 90 and then another 90 into the CPU block. And then we have a dual 90 from the CPU into the radiator. And I just love the way it flows as sort of one sort of, you know, back in on itself. I don't know how to explain that, but you kind of, I guess, know what I mean. So, I am so impressed with the performance of this. So, I'm getting roughly double the performance I showed you with the 4790 with that 5900X. So, I'll get in close and I'll show you guys that. So, we're in Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone and I've tried to opt to get my lighting so I'm a little bit darker, but there's less glare on the screen, so I apologize about that. Um, but you guys probably want to see the game more than you want to see me. But in this I get a, on the same settings as before I must mention, uh, between 120 and 150 FPS on average with the uh, GPU sitting healthily in the sort of high 40s to low 50 degrees Celsius range. Um, it's buttery smooth. The CPU does get a bit on the hotter side, especially in Modern Warfare for whatever reason that may be, being in the sort of uh, 70 ish degree range. I'm getting a lot of network lag in this game too. You can get the uh, the packet burst symbol that comes up on the left here with the uh, yellow squares happens quite a lot on this system which I didn't get before but you can see it just happened there and uh, yeah I mean I'm getting around 80% CPU usage now and like I say it's sort of consistently over 120 FPS. So we're in Black Ops Cold War and obviously my save hasn't come across. So uh, this is just in the first mission and as you can see I'm still getting healthy temperatures on the GPU in the 50s which I'm very very happy with but uh, CPU I'm hitting the 80 degree range which I mean under 
water in a custom loop, that is just far too hot. But I'm getting good FPS. I'm sort of sitting around the high 90s, low 100s, depending on the area. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on here. All settings are max, just like before, ray tracing, everything like that. And I mean, this is more than playable, you know? Um, but obviously, that CPU temperature is a little bit of a worry. So we are now in Red Dead Redemption 2, and... I've gone from about 30-ish FPS to around the 60-ish mark, that's with everything on other than motion blur. Um, and this surprisingly doesn't use as much CPU, but the GPU is peaking at 98% to 100% I guess. In this we're sitting in the low 70 degrees celsius mark on the CPU but it looks and feels so smooth. Um, some areas that are less big and open with less water detail and things uh, <laughs> um, actually or obviously will get better, uh, better frame rate in some of the towns and things but the water seems to be a big killer. Um, but, but with all the same settings, so everything maxed with DLSS off, we're only getting about a 10 FPS bump. So we're now gone from sort of the 30 FPS range to the 40s. Um, and in some situations, even just into the high 30s. So I think uh, at this frame rate, I would need to drop some of the settings. But at the same time, I could run at 1440p at probably close to 60 I would say so I'm not disappointed to, to say that it uh, would be wrong um, I don't know I said that that sounded weird but yeah I'm not disappointed of course it was to be expected at sort of a peculiar resolution and higher than 1080 or 1440 to not get um, FPS over 60 especially in a brand new AAA title and I mean it's actually feels relatively smooth given the fact you know so, so that brings us to the end of my yeah, Ryzen 9 5900X custom water cooled build with obviously an RTX 3080 GPU I honestly have outdone myself on this build I mean you can probably tell how pleased I am and how proud of myself I am definitely better builds out there for sure but for me personally I am very happy with this I never thought I'd be able to do a triple bend and I thought I would just cave and just use 90 degree fittings so I'm 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 so happy and I'm obviously excited to get to gaming on this machine and when some more bits and pieces arrive I'll have another video with my custom themed build to do as well. But really other than that I know it was mostly a lot of me babbling, not a lot of much else and I know my testing wasn't the most scientific but it gets a little bit of sort of real world sort of recognition for how these perform rather than seeing synthetic benchmarks being run. But really, other than that guys, I thank you all a lot for watching. Feel free to take a look at what else I do on my socials down below. And hey, I'll see you in the next one. Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh